Action. I'm Tyler McCann. I'm Ty Kent. I'm Ryan McCown. I'm Lauren Davis. And I'm Michael Chahoy. So the case study that we did was by Debbie Lovewell Tuck. She's the editor for employee benefits. And it's pretty much her talking about the first time she saw a robot being used in place of a human at a robotic bar. And it was a barmaid named Cynthia. And it was a robot that was programmed to make almost 60 different types of cocktails. And she kind of noticed that it was like, some problems right away because the technology was kind of weird. It didn't make very consistent drinks. And she just had some concerns about it with everything that had to do with it. And like, if it was consistent, if it was better or worse than a human, because there's a lot of interaction between humans and the consumers that you miss if there's a robot. So she had some concerns about that. But since then, the technology has improved a lot and you see these kiosks used more widespread. Like in many restaurants and fast food, you see them so you can order off them instead of going up to the counter and using the register. It's like lots of fast food like McDonald's, Panera, Sheets uses them a lot. And they are really efficient and effective for what they do. You can customize your food. You can see the different items you can order what you want it's really convenient for them and there's a lot of benefits to it so some benefits for the consumers is you can order what you want you can have multiple people up at the kiosk at once you can just pick and choose what you want and the benefits to the employees that are not taking orders anymore is they can focus on the food so they don't have to run back and forth from the register to the kitchen so it creates a safer or more sanitary environment and also just makes it a lot more efficient for them and there's been a mixed response about the kiosk but mostly it's positive a lot of people like them and the only people who really are against them are lower skill employees who fear that their job's going to be taken because they'll be replaced by these machines and sometimes they're not necessarily replaced but they have to take on new job responsibilities so it's just kind of a process for them of adjusting to the technology and the automation isn't just for fast food places robots are taking over different types of jobs too like in manufacturing a robot does a job quicker than a human can so it makes it more efficient but they're still needs to be human jobs for them to operate. Um, so the chapter began um, by showing the benef benefic benefaction of baristas. So the Starbucks CEO, Howard Schultz, he said he's passionate about human connection. Uh, he explained that coffee is what he sells, um, but it is people business. The company's success comes from personal relations between customers and baristas. He also places great importance on the satisfaction and engagement of employees leading to positive outcomes, not only from the workers, but business too. The implementation of self-service kiosks defeats this whole purpose. Taking human interaction out of business doing little, does little for employees' morale and completely eliminates the intimacy that comes from engaging conversations with employees. Uh, reading this section, I can instantly went to Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is known for its amazing customer satisfaction and customer relations by saying my pleasure and being very nice to customers. Um, by implementing these self-service kiosks, that would completely um, get rid of the purpose of them being nice to customers because they wouldn't have any engagement with them, which would nullify the relationship between the customer and the employees, making Chick-fil-A not as appealing as it may be today. Contrary, social pressure is a root of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is any incompatibility between two or more attitudes or between behaviors and attitudes. Discrepancies between attitudes and behaviors often occur when pressure 
pressure forces an employee to act a certain way. Um, these pressures are put on by management, other employees, or corporate entities. The implementation of self-service kiosks would eliminate the person-to-person -person interactions. This decreases social pressures and allows for employees present true emotions instead of putting on an act for the camera. Um, going back to the Chick-fil-A example, most employees are required to act extremely nice and may not be how they're actually feeling at that time. By implementing the self-service kiosk, a lot of this social pressure would be eliminated and employees could act like their true selves and not have to be overly nice when engaging with customers. This would increase employee morale and overall make the work experience more better for employees because they're, they don't have the pressures of interacting with customers on a daily basis. Instead, they can focus on making good food and providing good service in that way. Organizational commitment is the degree to which an employee identifies with a particular organization and its goals and wishes to maintain membership in the organization. Um, the point of organizational commitment is to prevent employees from engaging in work withdrawal. Um, employees experience work withdrawal when they lack a sense of loyalty or attachment to their position. Implementation of self-service kiosks will disconnect employees to a great extent. Um, employees will be slaves to the machine and lack any sort of commitment or personal connection to their work. Action is what makes jobs enjoyable for some. It is all their passion, personalities to shine and connects them to job to the job and on a personal level. Any worker to perform their job behind the scenes to feel unappreciated. Self-service kiosks will increase these feelings in workers that were not previously accustomed to this dynamic and diminish any previous commitment. These will prefer, prefer to be behind the scenes. Um, so this could be a cook or someone that works in the back in the kitchen. So there's jobs available for those people. But people that really enjoy human interaction can work front counters or um, the cash register. And by implementing these self-service kiosks completely gets rid of that dynamic and that appeal in jobs, uh, especially in retail. Like let's say for example, somebody's working at American Eagle or a Nike they work there because they like to interact with customers and provide their input and let their personalities shine. These self-service kiosks and many other um, mechanical implementations will get rid of that and make jobs very dull and lack personality, which is not very appealing to some people. Received organizational support or POS is the degree to which employees believe that the organization values their contributions and cares about their well being. The importance of this is people in some countries accept a higher degree of unequally distributed power than people in other countries. So, an example of that is the United States, which essentially means that people are more likely to view work as an exchange than as a moral obligation. So employees look for reasons to feel supported by their organizations. Now, if you look at China, there's an example of a high power distance, which in this case, employee perceptions are not as deeply based on demonstrations of fairness, support, and encouragement. And relating this back to the self-serving kiosk, the imp implementation of more kiosks would eliminate this variable of perceived organizational support. Employees engagement. Um, this is an employee's involvement with their satisfaction for and the enthusiasm for the work they do. Uh, to evaluate an employee's engagement, you must know if an employee feels if their work is meaningful and important. So you'll go through and see if they like their job, um, whether they appreciate the people they work with, um, if they like dealing with the public, or if they'd rather be in the back room, stuff like that. Um, employee engagement can largely determine the productivity and performance of an employee. So if an employee isn't engaged with their job, they're overall not going to perform very well. So they're not going to be a productive and 
asset to the company. Um, and then if an employee is satisfied with their job, they're going to enjoy what they do and they're more likely to be engaged and overall productive, which will help the company out in the long run. Um, when employees are engaged in their work, they're less likely to have accidents as well. So from a safety standpoint, you always want your employees to be engaged and enjoy their job so that you can prevent hazards and accidents on the work floor. Psychological empowerment is similar to what we just talked about, but it is the belief and degree to which they affect their work environment, their competence, the meaningfulness of their job and their autonomy in their work. So employees want to feel like they have a purpose. They want to fulfill themselves. They want to act like or seem like they're making a difference and how they view their belief in what they do and their competence, competence and all that often predicts the stress they have, their attitudes, and how well, how well they do their jobs. So kiosks have the potential to increase, increase or decrease this empowerment depending on individual workers. If you're an extrovert and you like talking to people, being at a counter or register and talking to people, taking their orders, interacting with them would increase your empowerment while a kiosk takes that all away they would probably not enjoy their job as much and decrease their empowerment. However, if you don't like to talk to people, kind of want to be yourself, just do your own thing, a kiosk would help with that because you wouldn't have to interact with anyone and you could just do your job. And also, if you have in, or customers that are very rude or kind of mean, you don't have to put on a face if there's a kiosk, you can just let them order on their own, and then you don't have to deal with the attitudes so that increases your happiness too. So here's an example of one of the robots. Burger Pasadena. I am going to be cooking some burgers with Flippy and I'll be placing the beef onto the grill. These are fresh, never frozen. Flippy is already detecting them in the background. All right, and then so for now, I'm going to salt the burgers. That is something Flippy will do in the future. And then now I got to get the buns ready for our burgers as they're cooking. I'm seeing uh, kind of what Flippy is seeing. Yeah, so I get a warning of when he needs to move and stuff like that, so I can uh, plan my time appropriately. Yeah, so they normally cook for four and a half minutes. Um, and Flippy is using time at the moment. Um, it's kind of cool because it's, it's a little bit of a dance with Flippy because I kind of have to follow his lead, whereas when I'm in the kitchen with regular staff, we coordinate with each other. So it is kind of fun. A little quicker, he doesn't mess up as much. Yeah, well the funny thing is, is when you watch him scrape the grill after these burgers are done, he actually does it better than my average employee. So Flippy just, uh, he switched from his, the spatula he had on was the spatula that you use for raw proteins. The one that he switched to is the ones for cooked protein so that we're able to isolate any uh, pathogens. Now Flippy is going to scrape the grill. So he's going to ch uh, change over to his uh, grill scraper. You're going to see he's just going to make some nice smooth passes and get all that stuff off of the grill. He did pretty good. I can't, I have no complaints. I've seen Flippy's development over the last year and if I take a vacation for two weeks and I come back, I'm totally blown away when I see how much progress they made in a couple weeks. Order's up.
to, to continue with robots in the work environment, as we all know, robots aren't able to show emotion, so they can't treat customers in a positive or negative way, just kind of the straight, bland, monotone voice if they're programmed that way. Um, they always exhibit the same quality of work for every task they do. Uh, they don't let positive or negative emotions affect them because obviously they don't have them. Uh, they're substantially cheaper than hiring an actual employee. You know, the only you know, Every year you got to pay your employee the, your, their salary or, or whatever. And the only cost of the robot after the initial purchase is just the maintenance. And uh, they are usually easier to work with than some humans because some people have anxiety issues or different issues that may have them may have them struggle like with talking to other people. So the robot's an easier way to them to communicate or get along with their work. So with job satisfaction, job performance, um, job satisfaction is a me measurement of the uh, contentness of the individual in the workplace. Uh, the US is the fifth highest level of job satisfaction in the world behind some of the major European nations. And the higher the job satisfaction that an ind individual has, you know, the higher quality of output they're gonna, they're gonna have due to the fact they actually love their job. And ultimately all comes down to customer satisfaction. If the work that an individual is doing is uh, exceptional, you know, the customer is gonna see that and they're going to be happier what whatever product they're getting. So for the discussion questions, um, we said as time goes on, we tend to rely more on technology than face to face interactions. By using kiosks, are we becoming an even more interaction deficient community? Um, should there always be a secondary option to using a kiosk where you could actually order or check out with an employee? Would workers be more content or satisfied with their job if they had kiosks so customers could do the ordering themselves? And do you think employee productivity would go up if they had to interact with coworkers and not the general public every day because of kiosks? With this link, you can find our online poll to say whether we should implement more kiosks in places of business. And that concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.